Hey everybody, Jamie here. So Mother's Day is coming up and I recently read a report that says that the US spends over $2 billion on flowers every single Mother's Day. That is a lot of money. The same report said that moms were asked what they wanted most for Mother's Day and that the top answer was something homemade. Homemade, huh? I think I know a little something about that. Get ready as I show you how to make your own coffee filter flowers. Let's do it, girl. Okay, so for your flowers, you're going to need coffee filters, scissors, a straw, pen, pipe cleaner, or similar object, a small rubber band or hair tie, strong tape, from masking tape to duct tape, and any kind of adhesive, from double-sided tape to craft glue. Now, there's several different ways that you can make flowers out of coffee filters, so today I'm going to show you two of them. The first technique I call the bunch and crunch. All right, here we go, step one. The first step is to style your coffee filters. If you wanted to change the color, you can dip your filter in water, dye with food coloring, watercolors, teas, fabric dye, or watered down paint. If you wanted to change up your filter shape and size, then one example is to transform your filter's edge into sharp triangles for a spiky pattern, or you can snip away at the circumference to make a smaller filter. And of course, you can always do nothing at all and just work with your classic style. It's totally up to you. Once your filters are ready, the next step is to bunch one up into a flower-like bundle. Pinch your filter at its center and then bunch the remaining material until it ruffles into a flower-like form. Once you've bunched your filter, the next step is to crunch in your next filter. Simply layer on a new filter before using your fingers to adjust the filter's ruffles accordingly. Repeat this step, layer after layer, until you've got one big filter flower bouquet. I recommend using between three to six filters for the best results. When finished, use that rubber band to bind your base together, locking everything in place. Step four, the last step is to add in your flower petals and stems. Start by cutting out your coffee filter or any other type of decorative paper into several leaves like shapes. Use your glue to attach your leaves anywhere you like, behind any layer of flower that you like. Finally, attach your stem by wrapping or gluing it to the bottom of the flower center in order to complete your look. Isn't the bunch and crunch fun? And it takes no time at all. I mean, I finished this flower in less than five minutes, which means in less than an hour you can have a dozen flowers to show off, whether in a mason jar, vase, or other decorative holder. Now, if you're looking for a way to make more of an individual flower as opposed to an entire bunch, then I figured out a way of making a singular rose. I call this technique the singular rose. The first step is to cut your filter into a spiral. Start at the outside edge and slowly cut your way around until you get to the filter center, giving yourself an inch or two of width to work with as you go. When finished, the next step is to attach your spiral to your tape. Roll out two feet or so of tape and place it face up on your workstation, taping it down in place if needed. Place one end of your filter spiral down on the top half of your tape, making sure it overlaps the tape as much as possible. Then continue unwinding your spiral along along your strip of tape, bunching your filter and sticking it onto the tape from one end to the other. As you work, you may feel like you're bunching too much here or not enough there, but just trust that the imperfections in the process are what are going to give your rose that genuine, one-of-a-kind look and feel. Continue until your entire filter has been used or until you run out of tape. Step three, the final step is to attach your stem to your flower. Take your straw or pen or other similar object and place it down, then slowly wrap that tape around your object over and over again and watch as your filter strip magically forms into flower petals. Once you've finished winding, feel free to nab another strip of tape to continue wrapping down the length of your object, stopping if you like to throw on some decorative flower petals before continuing down to the object's end. When finished, use your scissors to cut the end of your tape or your stem itself to complete your desired look. This craft is so great. It costs next to nothing, takes no time at all, and looks absolutely gorgeous. Something like this is great for a one-time punch, like taping this onto someone's locker or onto your own refrigerator in order to leave a kind note for a friend or family member. And since Mother's Day is right around the corner, it could actually be a pretty good idea to hide one rose at a time with a note of encouragement in your mom's car, purse, or anywhere else you'd like to surprise her. All holla at the homemade flower. How did you make your coffee filter flowers? Tweet me at Jamie Petito, Instagram me at Hey Jamie, or let me know on my fan page on Facebook. For a more in-depth look at how to dye coffee filters, check out my homemade card and envelope DIY. And if you like making flowers, Flower pens, check out how to make a flower pen completely out of duct tape. We did it, girl. I'm Jamie, and you're on girl.com.